this entitled mum demands a minivan that does not exist and expects to be compensated for it. But these clever staff members have a trick up their sleeve to discover the truth behind this EP and foil her plans once and for all. Happy birthday, today's your birthday and on with the revamped show. I've worked in the travel and tourism industry for several years mainly in transportation but some hospitality and business management. Saying that the business I am in is rife with EPs and entitled people in general is an understatement. At the time of this story, I've been with the company for a few months. It's starting to get close to the holidays, so my small office is getting busier and busier, with more family planning to rent a vehicle than take dad's beat up 1998 Suburban to grandma's house. I still was gleaming with positivity about my job unaware of the horrors that people could turn into when their family vacation is on the line. December of 2016. The Christmas travelers have started piling outside our doors first thing in the morning. Office opened at 7am, but we were usually there by 6.30. One morning, we see a small line of people, which is to be expected. But what stands out from this one is the entitled mother at the front of the line. We'll call her EM and her six high-spirited children climbing on the railing outside of our office. We managed to get inside the building and get things up and running for the day. My manager greeting EM and letting her know we will be open in a few more minutes. What do you mean? We've been standing here for half an hour in the cold. Can I bring my children in? My manager sort of blinks and says, of course they can come in. It'll just be a few moments before everything is up and running. My two other co-workers and I look at each other and just internally flatline before my co-worker gives me a knowing look and mouths, this is gonna be a fun one. My manager brings the woman and her children in while we work to get the computers booted and the office in running shape. For 15 minutes, this woman repeatedly asking if we're done and can get my gun car yet while her kids use our lobby chairs as a jungle gym. Admittedly, the kids were pretty cute and staying relatively calm. Once the computers are booted, my manager has me look up the woman's reservation. I say hello and EM just ignores me. Not uncommon, but I continue to get the system started. I ask for her name and she spits it at me while shooing one of her kids away from her legs. This is where things get complicated. Her reservation was for a minivan, which we were completely sold out of. How she even managed to make that reservation, I don't know. But it was time stamped as being made only an hour before we got to the store. When I tried to inform her of this, you could see her blood starting to boil. Are you kidding me? I made this reservation ages ago. I need this van for me and my children to visit my mother. It's Christmas time. How could you be sold out? Me being the newbie, starting to panic a little, and my manager, we'll call him James, steps back up to the front after noticing this. Ma'am, please don't yell at my employees. We are sorry we don't have your minivan at this time. You are correct. It is Christmas time. So we've been sold out, but if you wait a few moments, I can try and call another location to secure one for you. How could you not have one here waiting for me? Well, it appears as if your reservation has been made just this morning. We've been sold out of minivans for a few days now. If you have a seat, I will gladly try and find you one. This better be quick. My kids haven't had breakfast and it's starving. The kids were fine, still running around and playing in the lobby. James asks me to call the other location, thankfully only a few minutes away, and see about getting an extra van. While I'm on the phone with the office, EM is mumbling loudly about how horrible our service had been, and how she expected us to make our mistake worth her time. I managed to get the other manager on the line, and he says he has no vans left but he does have an extra Suburban we can use. I notify James and he tells one of our drivers in our office to get ready to go grab it. EM must have heard me say what vehicle it was because she is immediately up at the counter, demanding that it have leather and heated seats so my children can be comfortable for the long ride. By this point, we all just wanted her gone. So we were trying to make this as quick and efficient of a process. James tells me to take her license and process her paperwork, and we can attach the vehicle to her contract once it arrives. I pull open her reservation, type in her driver's license number, hit search, and... Uh... James? 
He turns back around and looks at the screen. A very large warning message has popped up, explaining that this woman is essentially on our blacklist for damaging a vehicle. A luxury vehicle. To the tune of $25,000 worth of repairs. All of which had yet to be paid, and this claim was about two years old. James, with now much more stern tone, I'm sorry ma'am, but I'm afraid we won't be able to get that vehicle for you today. It looks as if you may have had a previous issue with another car, back in 2014. I already paid for that, it was a couple of hundred dollars anyway. Ask my lawyer, he'll tell you. Ma'am, unfortunately we can't. Your job isn't to tell what you can and can't do. Your job is to get me into that freaking car. James now picking up the phone with a smile. Actually ma'am, my job is to weigh whether or not someone is trustworthy enough to put into one of our vehicles. You clearly are not. I will have to ask you to leave or I will be calling the police. Hiem does a panicked little shuffle, swiping her ID off the counter and gathering up her children to get out the door. I guess she had figured this would happen because a big old clunker of an SUV had pulled up outside our office and she hurriedly shoved her kids in it before the driver peeled out of the parking lot. My coworker was right, that was a fun one. I guess it was a bit of a plot twist there at the end that she had done so much damage to a luxury vehicle. And yet at the same time, it's not a surprise at all. It's just like, of course she did. My question is, why would she be so dumb to come back to the same place where she hasn't even finished paying the bills yet? I mean, I know a lot of those sorts of places swap blacklists so that, you know, it's kind of beneficial for both businesses. So it probably wouldn't have worked anyway, but she doesn't know that. So why would you go back to the same one? I am fuming, but willing to provide context. First, I've been working with children for a long time. Even the most excitable toddlers are willing to communicate politely if asked. This is why I'm easily aggravated when adults are unable to compose themselves in public. Second, I've been having issues with my ID being lost in the mail. It's been difficult to iron out and I've been running around for months reordering them. I was at the post office Monday, mid-December, yikes, to speak with a supervisor. I was lucky to have arrived when I did, as a huge surge of people trying to ship holiday packages showed up almost immediately after. I'm about 10 to 15 people behind and am in a bit of a hurry, but willing to wait because I can see employees scrambling around trying to help customers. Always plan ahead, y'all. I chatted a bit about the long line and holiday plans with the girl ahead of me. This is common among extroverts in the US. I suddenly notice someone walking very close to me on the left side. As soon as there's a couple of feet between myself and the girl in front of me, the wild Karen steps even closer and attempts to casually squeeze between us. I ignore her and close the gap before she can cut in line, which again is extremely long. She's loudly complaining to her teenage son about how she only has 10 minutes. I told random name I'd have it shipped last week. Her son says they're already late and they should come back tomorrow. So and so will be fine. I'm now third in line. She huffs and begins to walk parallel to me with a huge box. Again, trying to nonchalantly squeeze in. I try to close the two foot gap, but she shoves ahead and I run into her by accident. She looks back at me and frowns. Excuse you. The son loudly whispering, Mom, let's just go. During the process, she has also run into the girl originally in front of me with her huge box. The girl turns around and is surprised to see a random lady where I used to be. Karen to the girl, I'm in a huge hurry, can you just move? The girl raises her eyebrows and starts to say something, but the clerk calls her forward. She gives me the yikes eyes and heads over to the desk. I say nothing because I'm not trying to make any more of a scene. Karen is called up to the desk at the same time. I'm called to an adjacent one. The clerk takes my name and directs me to stand by a door and wait for a supervisor. I head over and can overhear Karen freaking out because the cost of shipping her giant package is more than $40. She demands to speak to a manager, shocker, and the clerk tells her to hang on for a moment. The only supervisor will be at the desk in a few minutes. The supervisor, very nice, named Sherry, opens the top of the split door, calls my name and I begin explaining my issue. 
Karen leaves her son and package, storms over, and interrupts. I've been waiting for 20 minutes. Total bullcrap. I need a supervisor right now. My package. Sherry cutting her off. I'll be over in a moment. Go ahead and wait at the desk, please. Karen starts to argue, but OG Sherry tells her again to wait at the desk. Karen then grabs her package, ignoring the clerk telling her to wait, and steps right up behind me as Sherry takes notes and copies her information for me. I thank her profusely when I finish and wish her a happy holiday. As I'm walking away, Karen frowns and starts telling Sherry her sob story. Sherry says, for the third time, to wait at the desk. Karen whips around, but by now, the clerk has a case of the frickets and called someone else to the desk. He tells her to go to the back of the line, which has only grown. Sherry takes the brief moment Karen looked away to slam the top part of the door shut, high left before the shrieking started. I don't know if you've been to the shops in the past few days, but it's really getting bad out there. The car parks are crowded, as are the stores inside. Most people seem pretty stressed, and there are a lot of entitled parents out there, so be careful guys. I live in a medium-sized Western European city, with only a small, domestic flights kind of airport. So when I fly international, I usually go to the closest big city, with one of the biggest airports in Europe. I often take the bus to go there because it's way cheaper than the trains. The connections are not always well-timed, so sometimes I have to spend a few hours waiting for boarding. A few years ago, I discovered that Lufthansa often offers business class tickets for almost the same price as economy tickets. There are also first class tickets, which are much more expensive, but that's another story. The difference between the business and economy tickets is that you get priority boarding, almost twice as much luggage allowed, and you are seated in business class. The middle seat is empty, and the food is way better. But for me, the biggest perk, the one which makes me pay 50 euros more, is that it gives you access to the business lounge at the airport. There is free food, and most importantly coffee, and you can enjoy a comfy seat. So when I have to wait 5 hours at the airport, I go the extra mile and take a business class ticket whenever possible. Now, the story. A few weeks ago I was going home to Moscow, and I had to wait 4 hours at the airport. I dropped off my luggage and went to the business lounge to wait. When you enter, you have to pass a security check, showing your boarding pass to the lady at the reception. Here I have to say that I'm in my early 30s, but look younger. And when I travel, I try to be comfortable. So jeans and sweaters mostly, no fancy attire. I waited in line to get inside, and just in front of me, there was Karen. The suit, the bag, the hair. Everything screamed, look at me. And along with her was her little goblin, just screaming nonsense. Kids at airports are generally insufferable. The line didn't move for a few minutes, so I took off my headphones and listened in. Karen screamed something along the lines of, I've been flying with your company for years, let me in. The lady at the reception had to call the security to help her explain that the lounge was only for people with business class tickets. Mind you, often not much more expensive than the regular ones. Karen finally gave up and stepped aside, but she stood close by, and when she saw that I was allowed inside, yelled something about how unfair it was. I was clearly cheating as I was not rich enough to be there. I went inside and ignored her. Fast forward a few hours, I'm at the gate, waiting for boarding, and then, the horror, I spot Karen and the goblin, waiting for the same flight. Great. The priority boarding is announced. I go inside and I can feel Karen's glare on the back of my head. I ignore it once again, go to my seat, sit down, and wait for the plane to take off. I don't like the takeoffs, so I close my eyes and try to relax, listening to some music. About 10 minutes or so later, I feel someone pop on the seat next to mine. I must have dozed off because everything didn't immediately register to me. But I knew it was weird because the middle seat is always empty in business class. I reluctantly take off my sleeping mask and, oh no, it's the Goblin and Karen taking the seats. That's weird. I know they are not supposed to be here but I don't say anything. Maybe they got an upgrade. A few minutes later, however, an older gentleman arrives, apologizing to the flight attendant for being late. And just as suspected, Karen was at the man's seat and Goblin was just taking the empty seat. 
The gentleman tried explaining that it was his seat and they must have made a mistake. The following exchange followed. Yes, because this young lady has stolen my seat. Pointing at me. Um, no I did not. I show them my boarding pass. Then, to my horror, the goblin grabs my boarding pass and rips it with his little goblin hands. I'm not a shy person and I'm not easily rattled, but man, I was shocked and did not know how to react to this blatant display of entitlement. The commotion made the flight attendant come to us. Mind you, the gentleman was standing as his seat was taken by Karen. What's going on? This jerk has taken my seat. Please remove her so I can sit next to my kid. Um, it's her seat, pointing at me. The kid just tore her boarding pass. The pieces are still in his hand. Nonsense. Flight attendant, please change my seat. I don't want to sit next to this liar. Karen screeched. The goblin cried. The engines were rolling. So, lots of noise. The flight attendant finally had enough and very politely, but loudly, said, Lady, this is clearly not your seat. There is always an empty seat in business class. Please go to your seats and stop bothering the passengers or I will remove you from the flight. Karen, feeling she was losing the battle, made a final attempt. I'm a frequent flyer. The least you can do is bring me some complimentary wine. With that, she yanked her kid and stormed to her seats in economy. This was the last I saw of them. The whole flight was uneventful afterwards, but I did get to know the old gentleman and turns out he's often on Reddit too. The terrifying thing about an EP on a plane is that there's nowhere to run or hide. Apparently not even if you're in business class and they're in economy. They'll just weasel their way in there and you'll wake up and they'll be sitting next to you. How wonderful. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.